Well, hello again. On this video installment, I'd like to discuss a, a fairly common horn, but it's uh, but I think it has uh, a couple things that really, really set it apart from horn, other horn speakers of the period, and I wish to go uh, to discuss it in further detail, and maybe add some clarity or, and add some uh, remove some of the mystery of of what uh, the speaker and and why it has what it has. Now, this speaker, the Magnavox horns, came in several different variants. Uh, this is an earlier variant because if you notice, the, the neck is straight. And the straight neck horns were typically the earlier horns. By about 1923, the, uh, the horns had gone to a, a curved neck. So, with this one being straight, it is indicative of an earlier horn. Now what I like to do is I'm going to remove the bell, get that out of the way, just for ease and, and clarity of, of the video. Now, here is the base, and it's a rather heavy unit, uh, and obviously the most prominent unit or prominent device within, it, or poised upon, is the cylindrical device you see here. It actually is three units in one, if you want to look at it that way. The lower part here is a field coil. The upper part is a voice coil and metal diaphragm. And that essentially is what really set Magnavox apart from the other horn speakers of the period, the voice coil. It is my understanding that Magnavox was the first manufacturer to ever employ a voice coil in their speaker uh, technology. And allow me to bring this ad forward. Maybe it'll add a little bit more clarity just yet. Now here's your voice coil. Now we're, most of us are familiar with a voice coil on our speakers of today, how it affixes to a paper cone. But the technology hadn't progressed that far as of yet during this period, and the voice coil affixed to a metal diaphragm. Now I have to confess that metal diaphragm does add a significant metal tinniness to the speaker, but boy, this technology greatly improved the, the frequency response uh, and, and volume, and it, it was just, a, it was just a, a major leap forward. So once again, here's your field coil, voice coil, and diaphragm, all located within. Another question I've been asked previously is, what is this device here? This device, this black box you see here, is nothing but, nothing more, nothing other than a impedance matching transformer or output transformer. And most of us are familiar with the, with the transformers that we see mounted on our speaker frames of today. Well, this does the same purpose. What it does is it matches the high impedance input here coming from your radio coming from your set to your very low impedance voice coil your voice coil is a very low impedance device so you had a high impedance input and low impedance load and this output transformer here impedance matching transformer matches this the high impedance to the low impedance not unlike what they do today rather neat now i will have to discuss one other item if i may i've already touched on here this is your speaker input i wish to touch on these two connections to the rear because notice this speaker has four connections now these two here this is a six volt dc input back in the day this would have come off your a battery and this provides the voltage necessary to energize this field coil we spoke of just a minute ago. Once this field coil is energized, it allows your voice coil to float and respond to the audio impulses very, very well. Now, the it was some years later before magnet technology had improved to where field coil wasn't necessary. 
but certainly in, in the 20s, that technology, magnet technology, was still a long ways away. But uh, So at this period, they had to employ a field coil. But anyway, there you have it. A Magnavox horn. I hope that answered maybe a couple little questions, or if you happen to have any questions, do not be afraid to ask. And uh, as always, I want to thank you for watching. And until next time.